Hello, thanks for joining guys. Today one of our listeners submitted questions was what is my opinion on kind of two trends that are going on right now. Uh, first trend being what's my opinion on CBD and on fresh, fresh food. Basically not pasteurized, not cooked, not any of that. Kind of the fresh foods that you can get in the pet store in the refrigerated section. So two great questions. Thank you for submitting them guys. So the first one is the CBD. So both of these topics can be a little controversial depending on who you talk to, but this is my opinion. So here we go. <laughs> the CBD oil, it is something a little bit newer to the veterinary industry and the veterinary community and veterinarians in general. Uh, the last time I looked into it, there hasn't been a whole lot of research with it. Some doctors loved it, some hated it and everybody in between. So my personal preference and what I've seen over the last few years now is I've had clients use it at 10 times the higher dose that I found from a article and it worked well for that patient. Other patients did different doses and didn't see any results whatsoever. Now I do think the CBD will become a thing that's an over the counter, A it already is, B what I don't know about it is going to be the quality of CBD. Uh, the easy example that I use all the time is joint supplements. Some joint supplements are really good and high quality. Others are crap and you're just not getting what you think you're getting for it. Uh, my other go-to example that a lot of people are familiar with is echinacea. Echinacea, a lot of people are familiar with being a very useful drug, helps the immune system boost this. It's an herbal medicine thing. It's great. But if you're not getting the correct part of the echinacea plant, you are literally wasting your time and money and getting zero benefit for it, regardless of what you're spending. It needs to be the echinacea root itself, not the echinacea stem, the leaf, the plant. That's not what you're paying for, or you're paying for it, but that's not what's giving you those medicinal purposes, those benefits. So I do kind of relate CBD back to some of that. Uh, I have had decent results with it in behavior. The one that we use here at this clinic at Eastwood is a medical grade one and it is extremely potent. I have not come across any clients over the last few years that have come with one that's even near as potent as ours. Uh, it'll range from about 12, 1500 milligrams per ml to 2400 milligrams per ml. And I know our source is a high end source in a very high quality source. I can't speak for the over the counters. I just don't know and there's not enough research to support it. The other part is I have had good results with it on some behavior patients, some neurologic things, and some clients swear by it with arthritis, others it didn't touch. Some we paired it as a multimodal approach with other pain medications and had really good results. So is it something where I think there is a place for it long term moving down down the road? I personally think there is, but it is an off-label use and it is something that we just don't know much about and each owner has to be comfortable with the unknown risks and so does the provider. So hope that helps a little bit for the CBD and let us know. Give us your feedback guys. Thanks.